Welcome to Reader Syndicate 3.0, the next evolution of the look into counterculture that is canon. My name is Matthew, owner of Riot Seeds, and this started as a one-man mission for strain history and breeding science. Over time, it's evolved into something bigger, better, and more of a team effort. We will be joined by members of the Can Illuminati and other friends throughout the seasons to hear their takes on grow techniques, breeding science, strain history, and more. Our mission is to combat the narrative that corporate cannabis and seed posers are obfuscating for their own financial benefit. Welcome to the underground. We are the Syndicate. This is something that we were talking about before we hit the record button, which was maybe seeing a trend, uh, seeing more NLD uh, in people's work. What do you guys think about that? Like, you know, High Lonesome, have you have you observed like more interest in NLDs recently in like the American side of things? Uh, I have. I think that's coming uh, from more people being able to home grow. Uh, it's not it doesn't seem like it's made any any impact on the commercial market. Uh, I've I've been no, in no dispensaries. Yeah, I mean, I, I've been in dispensaries in Maine and Colorado recently, and when you ask for a sativa, they'll tell you they have sour diesel and Chem Four, and it's like, I, you know, that's not that's not what I'm trying to smoke right now, man. Uh, but I think with with the expansion of home growing in the U.S., um, a lot of people are looking for, you know, weed that they remember. From from when they were younger or maybe just a different experience um, in it. And the seeds that I make and the plants that I grow are, I, I like the effect. You know, I want I want weed that I can smoke and it gets me motivated and makes me feel good. And, you know, I can, I can, I can get stuff done. Um, I like the, the psychedelic stuff in the weed world. Um, and I think a lot of people do, and a lot of people are just starting to look for something different. And there's a ton of, of good work going on out there. I mean, the the band aid haze thing is great. Um, there, there's been a kind of a resurgence in it, and I, I like seeing it. I wish there was more of it. I think everybody should try some of these more NLD plants. Uh, try the effect. See where you where it, you know it, it can be life changing if you're if you're just smoking. Kush all the time or Kim Dog all the time, you know, and, and you switch and you smoke a good mango haze or a band aid haze or northern lights haze, something like that. I mean, it, it can it can change your outlook on life. You know, you're more present, you're uh, more engaged. Mm -hmm. it, it's just um, I really think everybody should should get some experience with it and, you know, kind of get away from just the standard dull high you get from a lot of the modern genetics. Matt, random question for you. Are there many blue or bonnet NLD crosses that you've done? Any any plans for, for some? <laughs> mm, that's a good question. I don't know. Like off the top of my head, I think most of that stuff was pretty Afghani dominant when I was uh, doing that work. I had gotten done with a, a bunch of years of doing nothing but mostly I wouldn't say like truly narrow leaf dominant stuff but more leaning that direction and i think during that era i was i was taking a completely different direction because the market was totally different i'd like to see it for sure but um i don't know i don't know how much longer i'm gonna be doing Congo that cash was the only one i could think that's of. right yeah but that yeah. one that was like uh that plant was really weird because it was narrow leaf but it was short and stocky yeah it, yeah the blue yeah. dub put out some fucking pretty tall shit man i don't want to play yeah. eight foot sideways that's yeah. one that i forgot about yeah but still, it's like I'm, I'm thinking Not a lot of like, tea lane, eh? No, good. no, it, it, it yeah. went a completely different direction than I thought it would. Very stomped it, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I, I don't know. I don't even know if there's any plans for stuff like that. If there's any demand for it, maybe you know, we'll see. Mm. Yeah, I was just thinking because the, um, you know, the blue side tends to be so squat and Afghani, you know, be it'd make for an interesting hybrid. Um, Wally, what's your take on like, you know, it, it sounds like you've you've done a lot of NLD work and what's your sense of its place in like the scene, modern scene? Do you see that do you see it like kind of like uptrending now 
a bit. Yeah, absolutely. It's also, I was going to say too, because work like H&L is doing, crossing it with things people are familiar with, the, the chem and stuff like that, and people are smoking that and going, oh, that, that other bit in there that I'm not familiar with, which is the mango haze, oh, I wouldn't mind trying that, you know. That, that, that tends to help, I think. But um, everyone needs to smile more, man, you know, and, and be more uplifted and happier and... That's what that that's what that stuff's for. It also makes you, your dick I mean, bigger. The what? <laughs> makes your dick bigger. <laughs> oh, now the secret's out. The it's like now the secret's out. In the wood. Yeah. That's yeah, that's how we're gonna make it just spike after that. <laughs> spike in the numbers. Increases <laughs> <laughs> the the turgid and and uh, girth. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the nature of it. Uh, you gee, it really an upsurge now that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> it started here guys it was this show that started it all the revolution just, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> just some false marketing um well i mean we've been talking about nlds but have you have you worked much with um blds in your time no not a lot the best the closest i've had is you know things like east coast sour diesel and that which obviously they're slightly longer flowering than a lot of the more pure Afghani sort of things. I I was never much of a fan of it, but to, um, my friend Mr. Moon he uh, he used um, uh, Tom's uh, deep chunk in uh, in in one of his crosses he made, and um, yeah, I smoked a fair bit of that. But it's that dream, dreamy sort of stuff that makes you a bit sleepy and hungry, and um, it wasn't really. I liked it, you know, because I like weed, but I don't need to be sleepy, and uh, I could do without eating sometimes too. <laughs> that deep, that that MBS he made, man, you just couldn't get away. I was cooking stuff, you know, like a lasagna or whatever, and then I'm eating stuff while I'm cooking the stuff, and it never even interfered with the meal I was about to have. It was just pegging out the the munchies severely that stuff. That sour bubble that you worked with was pretty decent as well. I found some good plants in the sour bubble Z99. Like, it was pretty dull, eh, on the Z99. Like, I know my mate found a couple that were on um, a bit more narrow and tall. I think I grew four, and they were beautiful. Stocky thumbs, beautiful crush smell. Big leaf on them, was there? Yeah, massive, like Jurassic Park, eh? Yeah, yeah, that's a, that sour bubble we grew. There's, like, palm trees, the things. Eh? Biggest leaves I've ever seen, actually, on, on a plant. Massive. Yeah, they get broad. Yeah. That was from um, old mate Ben Chicken. Oh, I kicked him over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was a good good bog line. Yeah. 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 You still I had him. The old... Oh, yeah. go for it, brother. No, go, please. Yeah. Oh, I was going to ask Wally, but forgot, when we were asking about the um, all the plants you've worked with before, I forgot to touch on the Laotian. Um, what was the Laotian, the one that you used in most of the hybrids, what was it like? And uh, where'd you get that seed stock from? From um, a guy, BLB, Bad Lower Back. And um, he lives in that uh, province I spoke about already, in Udon Thani, in, uh, in northeast Thailand. And it's kind of like right beside Lao. And um, he had some Lao friends, Lao Asian friends. And he said this stuff was like the best sativa he'd ever had, and um, which pricked my interest straight away. And um, what do you say? They they bred it for a few generations, but then I wasn't really sure if they meant generations of cannabis or generations of the family, you know. But anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, he sent me some, and I grew that. And uh, man, that's fantastic weed. Um, that sort of stuff that uh, you know today's stuff, you know, takes you to zero to one hundred in, in in like three seconds. This stuff was gentle but it still got you there, you know, and um, it didn't dump you like today's stuff does where you, you know, you're suddenly you're not that high, but you're sleepy and you, you can't be fucked doing anything. This stuff, you were just sort of like, well, I'm not really high anymore, and, but you're all right. You're better you know? off than you started. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I like that. Yeah. I like that sort of thing. And um, what was the on that. Yeah. I, I, I was thinking about it because I remember you asking me previously about it and, 
to be honest, I have so much trouble describing that actual smell um, that I can only say it smells like Asian weed to me. <laughs> like I can't dissect smells. Like I know some guys on the forums and I, I listen to how they do it and I think, fuck, how can they get that out of there? So like my my nose just doesn't do that for me or whatever. But um, it's I guess it's mango-y. I know that smell in there, but I can't really dissect the rest of it. It's just like a nice, warm, mango-y, Asian-y sort of smell. that, Like the skin can... of a Thai green mango sort of thing, more than yeah, the sweet mango, hey, spicy, isn't it? yeah. 100% got that soury sort of bit in it. But, um, but I, um, I, I sent some to, um, oh, mate, I'm just trying to think of his name. But, uh, and, and he asked why I selected, the, why I crossed it with mango haze, which I did, and what was my goal, and um, euphoria, because they were both euphoric, and I thought they'd complement one another. And, yeah, they, they did so much, so fantastic. Is that uh, Mahakala? Yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah, yeah he, he loved the stuff. And, yeah, he does um, cool work. He's got a bunch of awesome shit, acid haze. I agreed. I think me, him, and, him and I have got similar sort of tastes, and so that's why he appreciated the the um, Lao Mango. And um, I sent, we, you know, we got a lot of local guys here that grow grow weed, uh, mostly Sativa, and um, a couple of them that have grown that, they, they just love the stuff because it, it just does the right thing for them. And big plants, good buds, you know, with, it, with nice flowers uh, and um, resistance to mold, et cetera, et cetera. And their customers, they just keep coming back for more. So that's that, that's that euphoria, man. You just can't get enough of it, eh? It's my favourite, yeah. Because, like, most yeah. people came up around us and my age came up on the Indica stuff. But I went to um, – living in Europe for a bit, got up to Holland a few times and got to try some of the hazes. But my mate's dad, he was an uh, importer from back in the day, and he was always just growing all his old seed stock. And it was, like, never the most knock on your ass stuff, but it was just like you're at a party, you know what I mean? Like, it did creep up yeah. on you, always beautiful effects. Yeah, yep. I was, that was always my um, interest. And that's pretty much my whole seed collection now. I've got a little bit of indica stuff, but mostly it's just, you know, from yourself, high and lonesome, white buffalo seeds, stuff like that. A bunch of stuff from Matt, a bunch of stuff from, um, yeah, more sativa sort of realm. But um, I got a bunch of that super loud crosses from you. I have to get some over to H&L as well, I reckon. Yeah. You know why we called it super loud? I didn't actually call it super loud. Someone else did, but it was uh, a bit of a pun. Uh, with Neville, to be honest, because he got everything was super, super silver haze, super skunk, and so that was super, <laughs> super loud. Yeah, <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> I had a, I had kind of a very broad question for for both of you, um, and we'll start with high and lonesome, which was, you know, if you look back at your breeding journey. I, I'm always curious about the the kind of balance or tension between like, how do I put it, like a conscious, intentional plan to make something versus like reacting um, to maybe accidents or like, I don't know, kind of like just going with what you have had at hand. Does this question make sense? Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I... I always have uh, goals. I always write down projects that I want to do. And then I have this really bad habit of like whenever I have a little bit of space or whenever I really just feel like it, I will pop a whole bunch of something that's not on my schedule to do. Um, I right now have a lot of seedlings that you know, I wasn't really planning on doing anything with, uh, but now I I am. Um, so I I try, but I kind of go with my go with my gut, go with my feeling uh, on it. You know, I I don't know I I don't know that I was planning on doing a mango haze project, but I, I love those plants. You know, it's um it's probably not the best move. Um, you know for the modern market to do something like that. But it's what it's what I wanted to do. I, I want to make things that I want to smoke. I want to make things that, um, you know, I think other people should experience. So I, I've tried the goal thing, but 
I'm not very good at it. Yeah, it's. I feel like everyone must deal with that that tension a bit of like, oh, this is what I thought I was going to do, and then this happened, and then I and I ended up doing this instead, right? That kind of thing. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, when I, you know, when I popped the mango haze, I had. I had a bunch of super silver haze at the same time. I had a bunch of the um, Neville's mango haze. I had a bunch of Northern Lights 5 haze. Um, and I kind of thought I was going to go with something like, you know, super silver haze or Northern Lights 5 haze. But um, the mango haze was just the one that I liked the most. Um, it's a, it's a great line. I, it's, like we've said, I mean, it's euphoric, happy weed makes you feel good, and it definitely, it definitely gets you there. Um, it's it's strong weed. It's good, and uh, I just, you know, I wanted to see that mashed up with some of the more modern stuff to, you know, get people to maybe deviate from just chasing clones and trying out something that's a little, you know, a little longer flowering, but has a completely different effect that'll put you in a different headspace. Nice. Yeah. I these are the kinds of questions that like, I want to ask more kind of about how, just like how life impacts your projects and how like you, you know, how you deal with that basically. And so, yeah, Wally, same for you. Like when you look back on the stuff you've made and how it's all gone, how much of that was like, how much of that work is, was was you just working to plan versus you just reacting to what you've been given or, you know, what happened at, at a particular time? Oh, it's probably 50-50, but I, I like h and I go into everything with a, with a goal in mind. And um, it's, it's about my tastes and likes, really, but not everybody has those, I guess. So I also make other stuff. And um, so I, I test everything out, but I... I give it to everyone else to test too and see what they like, do you know? And um, not everyone has the same taste as me. So some stuff that was unintentional and just an accident can end up being something that's appreciated more than stuff that I've had a goal to do, you know? Um, my, my, my like is, I guess, similar to a couple of the guys here, maybe all of you, but I like sativa dominant stuff and um, not everybody does. But... Um, so we have to give them options, I suppose. I, I don't mind something <laughs> that gives them gives gets you to sleep too. You know, we all have to do that at some point. But <laughs> yeah, of course. Wait, what about you, Matt? Like, in, in with your work, Matt, how how much of it would you say is like, okay, this this was all like planned, intended. I got there, or I didn't get there. Versus like, oh yeah, I had no idea that it just happened. I like to think that everything was planned, but I think I stumble fucked my way through like the first decade of doing anything realistically. <laughs> I don't know how much of it actually met goals. Um, a lot of it was just simple, like, especially in the beginning was simple. Like I want to make a, you know, like a, for example, stealth auto flower or um, especially during the, the era where purples weren't as popular or at least true breeding magenta purples. Uh, definitely that was all intended. Um, but like, the end pro yeah i don't know how often i met goals like up until the blue bonnet stuff but that's just because it was so easy i think like realistically to set a goal meet it be happy with it so yeah i think i just stumbled through everything for the most part <laughs> or i could lie and say yeah i was fucking from the beginning bro. yeah it all worked out fucking stellar yeah i, I mean no i think it's really interesting and i don't think there's anything wrong obviously with 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 having to you know deal with some randomness right or chance in yeah. life and they're both valid um i mean yeah people make like i look at 90 percent of the market and these ship shit for brains or you know like crossing whatever to whatever as long as it's cookies releasing it and bam it's elite so it's a valid way of doing things i can't really you know piss on it for the market they're probably making more money and have more interest in fame than any of us will ever get but at the same time it's not something i'm totally into but I get it. I guess it's, you know, I, I, I guess there's like a sweet spot, right? Um, somewhere. It reminds me of like making art or making music where yeah. there's going to be a degree to which you have a plan and there's going to be an element to which like 
something's going to happen that you're not expecting and it might be good or it might not be um yeah. and i think that's just life i guess <laughs> yeah yeah do you plan yeah, to yeah. return to any sativa stuff maddie in the future like that padana tie um it's got a lot of fucking esteem behind it i would have loved to get to that have you got any like stock that you could work forward or i have so much um just even even like heirloom land race stuff that i've collected over the years but like also as i've <sighs> As I've learned more, it's it's harder for me to pop some of that stuff knowing it's not in the right climate and that I'm not going to see it as it was intended. So mm. expression-wise, I don't know how valid it would be to like run it, try to make data points off of it, use it, knowing how plastic cannabis is, you know, and in expression. I mean, it, you know, so it could be hit or miss everywhere. I'd like to do more, but market sucks so bad i don't know i mean I, it is changing it's definitely changing i mean high and lonesome stuff selling really well um so yeah i'd like to do more of it but i mean i don't really do much right now as it is so we'll see see how the next year goes yeah we'll have to i mean the first thing is to get you smoking again right yeah that's <laughs> happening sooner and later i'm probably, i'm telling you i'm snapped i'm fully snapped on not smoking <laughs> what about yourself wally how did cheeky bong are you still on the break for the while, mate? <laughs> no, still breaking it. I uh, I thought if I if I did that Thailand move that I spoke to you about, that um, I'd have to get like a vape or something because yeah. you know you just gotta gotta get into it when you're doing that sort of thing. But uh, oh bloody oath, mate! Yeah, um, Rock I, I'm I'm still still happy not imbibing, but um, and I, I have a bong here uh, for guests. And, you know, I'll give them some weed and here's the bong, you know, and, uh, you know, they can get high because I like getting people high. That's, that's one <laughs> thing. Yeah. Like, oh, not that fast. Yeah. Fuck, I don't know how many times yeah. I've been high, but one or two times. <laughs> yeah, just a few. <laughs> yeah, right. A couple of times. Keeping the toes in the water. It's all right, mate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah. We have we have a couple of like pretty fun more like just questions about you know uh, life history the forums you know Thailand again, um, but was there any other recent work that either of you wanted to talk about um, that you've done before we move on? You go H uh, hey, now. Um, hey. I've I'm always doing something. Um, I. I've kind of been going back through some of the Appalachia crosses here recently. Um, I just finished the pollination with, uh, I called it Southern Gothic. It was Irene Appalachia. And that one was, it was definitely not a narrow leaf type. I mean, it's a very strong indica type plant, but uh, I hate, I hate the Irene plant. I wanted, I wanted something with some of those characteristics, but, without having to grow Irene. Uh, <laughs> so um, I, I went through some, I, I kept a couple plants around to maybe, maybe mess with some feminine stuff down the road, but you know, mostly just for head stash. And um, while I was doing it, I, I made some crosses. I crossed it to some narrow leaf stuff, uh, I crossed it to sour diesel. So I've, uh, I've started popping that stuff now and, Looking through some of that, uh, I have a, above a hybrid I'm messing with now as well. Uh, I'm in a weird position. You know, I, I like to smoke a lot of sativas, but it kind of drives my wife crazy when I don't have a bunch of indicas around as well. <laughs> so I kind of, my you know, I, like for the last few months, it's been a lot of a lot of haze hybrids um, that we've been smoking, and I feel like I have to do something else to appease that side of my life. Um, but you know, there's some there's some cool stuff. Um, but I do plan on on doing doing some more sativa stuff. Um, I mean, I have plans going now. It, in the next, you know, month or two, I'll be pollinating some of that. nice and and wally any any anything else you want to say on any recent work that we haven't touched on yet yeah i just tossed a bunch of stuff in actually some of it was h and l's um 
East Coast Sour Diesel Appalachia. But um, some uh, Deep Chunk OG, Sour Z99, a whole bunch of stuff with soury sort of gasoline notes. And then I put in um, that, um, that stuff I think might be webbed hybrid. Because if those things, uh, if it is that stuff, then we're just going to up the octane of those other things by miles if we we make make some crosses with it. So I thought I'd give it a yeah, go. Yeah, for that one. Yeah, I, I thought I'd give it a go. So because people like that shit, I that was my real other than likes of Tibers that you know high octane, massive, strong terps. I was all over that stuff. I loved it. The stronger, the better. Absolutely. Mm. Just not, if it didn't melt the paint off the wall when you blew it out, fucking she wasn't strong enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, it sounds like it sounds like it smelled like Death Star, which I know y'all probably haven't seen that down there, but that's a really just offensive. Yeah, over the top. I mean, it's like it's it's an insane plant. I, the taste doesn't come through, but the smell is so strong. It smells just so foul. That, that's the one thing with it. The taste, yeah, you're right. The taste just doesn't hit what the notes hit in the in the smell, for sure. The, the high also, I, I don't think, lives up to the smell. No. Um, no. I think, you know, it would be really good paired to, like, a Ken Z or something if you want, sure. like, that that nose, but like taking it up a level potency wise. Um, but yeah, that, yeah, that's going to accentuate the aromas. Yeah, yeah, you know, I like that too. You got plans um, to dip into any of your old like Thai or Laotian seed stock? Well, yeah, but it's not old now. No, no, it's just not the right time of year. I, I can't get them to flower oh. outside at the moment, and uh. I want to see how they do outside uh, because I don't know those sort of things. It's they don't really like indoors, and I I can't see how they do well enough. You know, I can't see a proper representation. I want to see what they get, how they go outside. So I'll have to wait till the later time of year when our hours are heading downwards because um, I got a whole bunch of stuff uh, like um, mango tie and chocolate tie and a um, couple of other things. I must have like about 10 or 12 at least sort of Thai stuff I've been sent and then uh, several Lao and um, some Mullumbimi Madness as well. But, yeah, it's just not the time for those. And um, I'll save what I think's good in, in what I'm doing now and uh, maybe I'll hit them with some, you know, some Lao and stuff like that and make some repos and fuck, I'm going to need a bigger fridge. Oh, I just thought of something. A long time ago, I mean, it's probably – well over a decade ago, we talked about the Papua New Guinea gold. Oh, yeah, PNG gold, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What do you know about that? I mean, it's not really talked about much by anyone, but I know, like, for, for a lot of people, it's a white whale. Ah, oh, I had some. I, I lived in PNG when I was a little kid. And, yeah. But um, I had a guy, uh, uh, when I lived in Melbourne, I had an Indian friend visit up here where I am now, and he bought some back, some PNG gold. And um, I grew it indoors. And uh, it was hard to control. It was a real uh, uh, whip and chair sort of thing as you went in the doors, you know, back. back. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, man, that stuff was amazing, beautiful stuff. So resinous for like a land racy sort of thing, you know. Yeah. And um, such a strong, beautiful smell. But um, I have some stuff labeled PNG. I'll grow them and I'll see what they look like. But I don't know. It's, it's a, they don't have like you know seed shops or anything over there, so sure. it's a bit it's a bit random. And you know you probably get something called that from there now, but it may not have anything to do with what we used to know of it as. You know. Yeah. Um, I think that's how it goes sometimes, eh? Yeah. Well, if you find it, put me on the docket for it. It's always stuck with me. You talking about it, and it always sounded super fucking interesting. Oh, beautiful, fruity, resinous delicious this you know the stuff that sticks in your memory yeah. you know that's always the, the good stuff hey and that yeah. stuff's definitely in my memory that png gold the beautiful stuff and it's such a unique part of the world bug? oh yeah crazy a bit crazy but I, it's a bit messed up once bloody the western 
you know, influence took a hold of it over there. It really didn't fare so well. So they're having riots and stuff at the moment. That's what, sorry? They're having, like, riots and stuff at the moment. There had been some natural yeah. disaster. And, and yeah. Oh, yeah. Was that the stink good. bug yeah. weed, mate? That PNG gold? You know that stink bug weed that you talked about? No, I don't think it was the same. No, this was really fruity, resinous okay. sort of stuff. Uh, I grew up with that. I was trying to think when, when that was. It must have been like in the late 80s, early 90s I was growing that indoors. But um, I've got some stuff actually here from a friend um, off uh, Overgrow who, who's a local where I live. He's, he's only living now, but um, he sent me some stuff that he said it's, it's, it's PNG crossed with our local weed. And... Um, he, he rates it pretty highly, especially where mold resistance is concerned because the area he lived in, it just rains all the time. And yeah. um, if a if a plant can, like, survive there, it's, it's like, bulletproof. And uh, I'm pretty sure to the PNG stuff would have to be pretty uh, rain tolerant. It rains a lot there. Yeah, yeah. it's a jungle. Yeah. yeah, it's right on the equator. So, like, the turnaround from seasons, you know, the... I think my I remember my mum saying it was like uh, only two weeks of the year it's, it didn't rain at four o'clock every day, but the rest of the year it did. You know, it's like you could set the clock by it every afternoon four o'clock, bang, there was the rain. Damn, Probably yeah, it'd have to be special for that. Yeah, yeah, I reckon. Yeah, but yeah, save them saving stuff like that. Uh, I don't really have. Uh, uh, a good hope of them doing it, you know. It's it's all very random stuff. Yeah. Even worse than us. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I had a uh, well, Booz had had a question about um, your seed, the state of your seed collections. The two of you. Um, do you want to tell us a bit about what that's like? Uh, while you, you, you mentioned the fridge earlier, you know, how much of the seed have you had to feed to birds? You know, I don't know. Like, how much <laughs> stuff do you guys have? <laughs> you lost your seed collection at one stage, didn't you all? Like the the main sort of one that you collected over the years? Oh, I think at two stages or more sometimes. I don't know. But uh, I've, I've gotten some back from other people at times. And then, you know, after that, you've collected a whole lot more, which I did. But, um, yeah, I probably got um, I don't know, a few kilos at least of seed. I've got a whole, I've got a whole fridge that's dedicated to, to seed, um, but a lot of it's like herbs and vegetables and, and stuff like that. And uh, it's, it's the fridge I don't open as much. Uh, I tell a lie because I keep the beer in there too. So. I was going to say, not the, not the bloody <laughs> beer fridge. Yeah, <laughs> it's, the, it's the coldest one, man, so it's the best for us. So. <laughs> it does get cracked open now and then. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Funny bugger. <laughs> what about you, HL? Yeah. What's your stash I, looking like now? Uh, it's, I have a lot. A lot, of, uh, a lot of seeds. I lost mine. Um, probably, I don't know, 13 or 14 years ago, I had a fire and lost a ton of stuff. Um, but I have rebuilt it to all that it was and more. Um, yeah. I have a lot of things from friends, a lot of, you know, a lot of things from breeders that I like. And then I have an ungodly amount of things that I've made that I need to look through. Um, it's, you know, I, I'm always trying to find a better organizational system, but it's a, uh, it's the better part of a fridge. And um, even some of the, the older stuff I have, I have it in a deep freeze stored yeah. away, um, which, you know, I've had good luck with pulling stuff out of there and popping it. Uh, you know, it's just trying to trying to beat time or slow down time because there's a ton of stuff I have that I really want to check out and dive into. But especially with some of these longer flowering things, I mean, you got to set aside half the year or more um, just to you know check out a line. So I have a pretty giant collection that I will never get to seventy five percent of. 
I think that sounds like everybody. Yeah, be like, yeah. 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 Yeah, I like like Wally said, kilos of seeds. Yeah. Did you like want to sort them in like the year they were made or the the variety of that if when you come up with a way of doing it, let me know. That's what I need to know. Yeah. <laughs> I keep thinking I find something, but it never really works out. I have stuff in jars, I have stuff in vials, I have bags, I have all kinds of things. It's not there is no standardized system in my yeah, fridge. Man. I'm exactly the same. It's all over the show. That's why I lose stuff. You go to look for it, I know it's in here. But, uh, oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, what about Matt? Matt, what's the state of your collection like? I mean, there's a bunch of shit. <laughs> it's it's <laughs> big bags, like uh, I don't know, ten gallon Ziploc bags stuffed in a fridge, totally unorganized. So yeah, I, you know me, I don't want to organize shit. So when people ask for certain things, I'm like, yeah, I got that, and it'll take me a year or two to find it. Poor, poor local keeps wanting to throw <laughs> the the Cali Mist, the old original pack of Cali Mist from Sirius. I'm like, yeah, I got that, I got that. Every time I pull it out and go to send it to him, I lose it. So yeah, I feel bad. About it. <laughs> it's how it goes. Like I'm like, my collection. I'll, is it like the first round Cali Mist? Like yeah, first drop. Yeah, it's it's uh, It's um, well, I don't know about first drop, but it was. 2000, I want to say it was 99 to 2000 when it was made. I asked a sign yeah. based on the catalog number. So it's just right there at that at that period where it's still probably a, a valid pull of it. Oh, yeah. You need to find those. I know. It. Yeah. You I mean, that, it's too bad. Did you see that Cali Mist F2 I put in the chat? No. That I posted up? Okay. I got some old stock from a fella from Maine. Um, I'm kicking like 30 to Shawnee kids. Uh, oh, nice. He was looking for some mail. So see if we can find something to hit to the, the old stuff. But um hell yeah, yeah I've, I've got some i've got like another 40 I'll, i've got more than enough shit to get to so if you want to take them h and l i can flick them over yeah dude and give them to your yeah. son. give them to your son, <laughs> to your son and we'll get him going on it i think there's a only like son project four or five left in the original pack so it's like it, will it pop i don't know but um the ak-47 yeah. were from the same year that were reproduced so i i imagine they'll pop but we'll see yeah Huh. We're going to have to leave our seed collections in our will to to the next poor next bastard. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I was going to local. Yeah. <laughs> 20 bugger. Fishing lure collection on seeds and possibly. Yep. 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 Oh, shit. I don't know who's getting my glass dildo collection, but they're going to be a rich man. <laughs> hey, you promised them to me. <laughs> <laughs> rich, rich man. <laughs> what are you putting out HL this year for? Because what June at the moment? Have you got a bunch of haze cuts in DEP at the moment, or what are you planning on growing sativa? Wise? No, in in my DEP right now, it's more. Well, actually, I do have A five out there, um, but I have some sour, some shoreline, uh, the F cut OG, uh, EB, I, a bunch of a bunch of things. Uh, but I do have a second round lined up uh, for my full term. And that is uh, kind of all over the place. I have a lot of super silver haze I'm doing because that's kind of a standby. Probably do an increase on those as well because, um, you know, it's about that time. Uh, I popped some of the sweet pea. Um, Band-Aid Haze from local. Yeah. Um, I'm really looking forward to trying that. I, we we went on a fishing trip recently, and uh, it was a bunch of us. And um, that God, that the sweet pea and the Band-Aid Haze were the the hits. Um, we were smoking pretty hard on those. Um, good old Rob Clark was there smoking pretty hard on those. It's a really good time. Uh, Do you like the Band-Aid one? I do. It's, you know, it's a bit heavy for me. It's like bedtime weed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those, those indicas like that, I can't, yeah, you know, I can, I can smoke them. If I keep going and smoking them throughout the day, I'm fine. But if I let it lag a little too long, I just want to take a nap. Yeah. Um, sure. So, so I've, I've gotten to the point where that's kind of like, that's stuff I smoke when the sun goes down. I don't, um, I, I can't smoke it all day like I used to. Uh, but yeah, I popped all that. Um, 
there's uh, some stuff from Loosh, the C5 uh, Destroyer, which sounds incredible. Um, I popped some more of Wally's uh, Neville's Haze, Mango Haze, because that one uh, that one ended up being really, really good smoke. Um, I kind of I I tried it, and, you know, cured it and put it in jars i smoked a little bit of it and i was like oh yeah that's cool it's you know a little serpentine to it um but very neville's haze leaning and i i kind of just left it um for probably six or seven months five or six seven months something like that and uh then i i got back into it recently and that shit will i mean it makes your forehead sweat you gotta like you gotta go out and take a walk um that that shit will knock you on your ass. It's very racy, very strong. Um, get your moving weed. Uh, so I popped some more of those because uh, they they did well outdoor here. Um, it actually it triggered a lot quicker than mango haze, so they ended up finishing before the mango haze, which surprised me. Well, was that the C five uh, Neville's? Was it H and L? No, that was the Neville's mango. Oh, Neville's mango. Um, okay. Did you make a C5? Did you you make a C5 Nevels? Yeah, um, C5 Mango Nevels. Yeah, that's I I like a bunch of them. This locals got a bunch of them. They were, um, but um, I tell you what, I I wonder if my friend that I grew with didn't mix some seeds in, didn't put end up with some Lao Mango ones in there because the difference between the flowering on some and the others, man, it's like six weeks different, which I don't know, maybe that's like a Neville's hazy leaning thing, who knows? But just seemed like fucking miles out. But uh, really good though, like fantastic. Yeah. But um, uh, the Neville's haze surprised me a little bit with its early maturing. And I, I've seen some from Shanty go the you know long distance, but other ones were quite early. And I always wondered maybe that was an F two or whatever. But you know, I'm not to say anyone's the purity of anyone's stuff. But um, is that one that you did an increase on? I didn't. I only had. Uh, I got a little bit of Neville's haze from a friend online, which he said he it's pre two thousand twelve, and for some reason that's a cut off for people where they think it might have been different after that. Whether it was or not, I no idea. Has but a, um, oh, no. still uh, a large large cola. You know, earlier maturing larger cola. Not not as satiry as some other people I've seen grow. You know what I mean? But you know, it's, yeah. it's not it's not really an F one, so you can have fucking a lot of uh, differences in them, a lot of variation. Yeah, we it's uh it's we actually uh, could finish most phenos of Neville's Hayes here. I mean, you get the frost hitting them a little bit, but it you know. You could get them done here, uh, mm. pretty consistently. It was, yeah, better than you think outdoor. Yeah, you find it really strong, super strong. Uh, yeah, but to me, it takes a while. Um, like as they cure, they get strong. Yeah. Uh, you know, the Neville says in particular, the A five is like that too. Um, yeah. You know, if you smoke it fresh, it's okay, um, but. With a lot of this longer flowering uh, lines, I, I'll let them cure for months before I really get into them, and they, you know, they get better with age. Yeah, hundred percent. I agree. Always better those ones with age. Well, this has been probably one of my favorite conversations um, on the show so far. I've, I've been really loving it. Um, really happy, you know that. The two of you can ask each other questions and stuff as well. Um, obviously, with plenty of um, input from Booz and Matt as well. Um, if you guys want, I thought we could move on to this section on the forums because I know that both H and L and Wally and of course Matt um, have all spent a good amount of time on the forums. Um, Booz, do you want to kick this one off, Booz? These are mostly your questions. Yeah, brother. Also, um, I, I will note I might have to say an Irish goodbye soon. But I'll, you know, I'll slide no out. Drama's a real man. Yeah. 
Easy ass. Slide out the back door like a devil in the night. (laughs) (laughs) Wally, what were some of the first forums that you were jumping on, mate? Because I know, I think you you said that African um, lady that you found was on some Aussie forum, right? Or was that just the... No, it was this thing called Leaf, Leaf, I think, something like that. I don't know how I ended up there. I'd no longer got a computer, man. So it's like look up weed forums or chats or talks or whatever. And um, yeah, it was like some something called Leaf, I think. And and that's where I met that African chick. And um, she wanted to, uh, oh, she had an ad there to selling African weed, right? And so I've, I've messaged her and said, do you guarantee this stuff ever arrives, do you know? And she said, well, you so cheap why not try it and it was it was cheap as fuck so and it was pre 911 too so i think borders like you know got a bit stricter after that but during those times um things were a little bit more open and um so yeah i i sent her some money and said yeah i'll have some of your durban poison and some of your swazi or or whatever it was she had and um and, and it arrived and i got it and uh the weed was a little bit average but but then I said to her, "Do you ever get any hash?" And yeah, she had some a uh, couple of sorts of hash, and uh, she sent me that, and it arrived. And, uh, and she was a she sent me some pictures. She was a hot chick, this hot little blonde girl. And um, so yeah, I sent her seeds, and I sent her weed. The weed never arrived to her, but she can have whatever she wants. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I, I did have a friend in Africa too, in South Africa there. And um, he is nearby. I think it was Johannesburg, I think. So uh, he said, look, I, I'm not that far from this chick. Uh, give me her address. And I thought, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so I gave her the address. And, and he said, yeah, this chick, she's packing. She, she's got kilos and kilos of weed. She's like some fucking big dealer girl, you know. The dagger. Yeah, man. And um, he said, oh, I, I sent her some duck's foot, and he said, she has got this plant in the front yard of her house. It's like eight foot tall and like eight foot round with these fucking golf ball buds all over it, this, this duck's foot that I'd sent her. And he said, you could smell it through the neighborhood. And she was, she, you know, didn't seem to care. And um, so, and at the same time, I met this other dude on the same forum, and he, he kind of like linked me up to Overgrow. And um, and also to Gypsy, but he was a little bit strange. And Gypsy even said, "Man, this guy's a bit weird." So yeah, he ended up exiting or whatever. And and that's kind of like how I met Gypsy as when well. When Gypsy calls someone fucking weird, <laughs> <laughs> you know they're fucked up. You know, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> so yeah, that's how I met him and uh, how I got on the Overgrow forum initially. So my and I like I say I was new to computers. It was like fucking early two thousands, so it's probably two thousand. I I had like the millennial uh, edition of um, fucking Microsoft, you know. So yeah, everything was new and fresh back then. Yeah, weed and titty pics. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no good days. Ninety nine. Yeah, I yeah. had like these uh, auctions back then. Fuck some of those auctions, some of the stuff on them. You wouldn't believe it. Yeah. Do you remember a guy called Dog Snob? Dog Snob. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, oh, a. Um, yeah. 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 He was one of the big buyers on those. And that guy um, with the Bubba Kush, the first guy that came online with the Bubba Kush. O- o- Ogusha Kid or Ogusha Kid. Or, yeah, Oregon Kid. Yeah. Oregon yeah. Kid, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. spoke to both those guys a fair bit. And uh, Ogusha Kid, I, he sent me seed and I sent him seed. And I wasn't sure. I sent him seed and said, you know, like fucking whatever. And he sent me money. He said he sent me money. It never arrived. But then eventually it did. And, and yeah, no, he was true to his word. There's like yeah. uh, fucking all this American money in this sachet somewhere. And uh, <laughs> dog's knob. Yeah, he was cool. He was cool. That's they used to buy yeah. up all those auctions, man. Isn't They'd that like, Ortega? Dog's knob? Hey? Isn't that Ortega? Douglas. Dog, oh, yeah, I always get the dogs. Yeah, yeah you're right, yeah. Yeah, no, this yeah, is confused. dog's knob, like dog's dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know how he got I that name. Him. I don't know sure what he was looking at when he fucking come up with that name. <laughs> you just made me cough out my bong gun. Fucking hell. 
What do I call myself? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I haven't so heard from him for a while, but I still hear from Moon. I just heard from Moon yesterday. And um, like he was in some trouble for a while because New South Wales is not a good place to grow weed and get caught. Fucking there's nah. strictest down there. Fucking and, Kanga got done down there too. Yeah, Sin, Sin Moon might love, dude. He was one of the few people on um, Mr. Nice that always had my back. And like, even, even before we were friends, he uh, went out of his way to have my back and make sure I didn't get fucked by a few people. Super cool dude. Oh, always yeah. appreciated him. Him yeah, and smoking cool. moose. Really nice guy. Yeah, moose, moose was a legend. Before. Good yeah, man. He's passed on now. That's too yeah. bad. Yeah, yeah, no, he's a good man. And uh, Moon, I said, he hadn't been doing anything for a long, long time. He stopped smoking and shit. And then I, I took, I don't know how many years before I went, I'll try this number that I've got of his and, and might be him still. You know, it was like years and years later. And when he answered the phone, yeah, it's him. He's kept the same number. That's so, awesome. Yeah. And uh, I sent him a bunch of seed. He said he wanted to get back into it. So he's busily uh, growing and selecting it as we speak. That's you awesome. Know? Yeah. That's it, it would be, man. it would suck to lose a dude like that, like in the, in the scene because he's a, a special dude. And, and he, he loves it, you know. He yeah. just, just loves it so much. People with that sort of passion, uh, we need them. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah, there's still yeah, a few no, around, which is good. Like, it's been a bit of a resurgence lately. Like, people popping back up. Or, I mean, you might you might not have lost contact with anyone, but, like, getting to meet um, Bucket Bongs and uh, Southern Sun Seeds, Sunny and stuff like that. It's awesome. There's still people kicking around. Doing good yeah. Stuff. I'm in a chat with them, a permanent sort of, one of those Instagram things, you know? And uh, so I hear from Bucket all the time, actually. He's cool. He's a nice man. Yeah, he's a legend. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to try and catch he's up. Than some of us. Some of us are also... reserved, you know? We don't, you know, we're going along a little bit, but this guy, he's fucking an excellent social man. You know what I mean? He, he could do one of these a breeze, whereas some of us introverted sort of fellows, it's a little bit harder for us, you know? Yeah, you get used to it. You get used to it. It's just a bunch of dick jokes, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's all it is. <laughs> dick jokes and weed. Titties. Don't forget yeah. The yeah, yeah. I mean, for you straight guys. But, yeah. <laughs> Funny, bugger. Did you ever have much interaction with um the boys down in Nimbin? Like, I know you said you went to the Canna Cup that one year. Um, I think that's the year Jason King was there, which is funny. But did you ever get to see any of Mulloway's gear, uh, Tony Bowers? Oh, yeah, I met Tony. Uh, fuck, his his weed was really good. I had a couple of bongs with him. Fantastic weed. It was of the uh, of the lot of them, uh, the best I had down there. Yeah, really. And um, yeah, really nice man. Really good guy. And then that other guy, um, Cog. Oh, no, there's two, like a uh, uh, 20 foot tie guy. Do you know him? Mm -hmm. 20, foot, 20 footer, whatever his name was. Him, I met him, and um, and uh, fuck, talk. Fuck, you talk underwater, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> cool guy, you know, he's fucking very passionate. And um, who else? The uh, I asked at the, um, it's like Oasis Cafe, I think it was, like one of the popular, like, hangout places about. Um, uh, Muller Madman, and, and they know, they knew him, and um, but they said they hadn't seen him at that point, so I never got to meet him. But um, yeah, uh, who else there? The guy that ran the um, they had like a cannabis cup there thing, and the guy that ran that, I, I can't remember his name. Maybe it was that uh, Meg. Yeah, Michael. yeah. Michael. He's a legend as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And as a German yeah. bloke, um, Chibo was. A German fella who lived down there for ages too. Well, I took some I took some hash with me and like um, it's really good hash and and I so I go to like do this entry with him and and he says we we don't even have a a, 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 a you know a category for that and um, but we'll take it you know and I thought oh yeah okay and uh, so we get to like there's all the photographers and that do it looking at the you know the, the entrance. And I look at this hash and I think, it's not like the ball I gave him, I'm sure, you know. It's like a gram, you know. And he comes over to me and says, he says, 
I'm not fucking putting that hash in there. That's just prime. We're keeping that shit. We'll just put a little bit in, eh? <laughs> Funny bugger. Yeah. I think that was the year that Jason King was there for Canon Bible 2 or 3. Okay. I think it was Canon Bible 2. Because I remember seeing, I think I sent you a photo. Because your golden pineapple was Canon Bible 3. But in number 2, there was a pic of him in Nimbin with like, um, oh, they had like a bunch of Mr. Nice. So G13 hash plant crosses. They had um, Tony's Blackberry, which I always wanted to see, the Mulloway one. Um, and they had one picture of a bit of hash on a table. So I reckon that's the year that you were there. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that's probably, probably it. Yeah, no, that yeah. probably is. And to be honest, like, I would have thought that, you know, it would have been the strongest of everything they had there, and maybe it was, but it didn't score as well because I heard a bunch of them complaining that they couldn't judge anything after that. It fucked them up and <laughs> whatever. <so. laughs> I felt the tolerance. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I haven't no. been down. I used to go often. Like, I went for years because when I come back from Europe, um, the only weed I could find was just that fucking PGR shit. And I was like, nah, not smoking it. Like, that's what I come up on, basically, um, from, like, an you know, early age. That's all I saw. And then when I went to Europe, they had uh, in Switzerland, mostly Albanian weed, but it was pretty good, man. It was just obviously some Dutch stuff that they were growing. And then going to Amsterdam, too. So then coming back home, only having access to that, I was like, nah, not going to do it. So I pretty much went to Nimbin like every two weeks for fucking years. Just go back yeah. down, back and forth, back and forth. Like, cause there was always good stuff. Like people rag on it. But if you like know someone down there, like when the lane boys were there, they had fantastic pot. And then um afterwards you could always find good stuff too, if you know who like you were going to. But I haven't been in the dog's age now, but I'd love to go back and see if I could find Tony or something. Cause yeah, he had some good stuff. Yeah, the key is to knowing someone. Otherwise you're just gonna end up with some rubbish that yeah. Perhaps it's kind of a unselected, rubbishy sort of. That's it's what they like. They said when I spoke with them a little bit about it that it's just from the tourists, you know, that they they just want to make some money out of their rubbish or whatever. But, uh... Yeah, mate. Yeah, I think um, we're probably going to have to get you both back on to do another one because there's like we barely even got to half the stuff. We got like yeah. all the four hour stuff to get to as well. But I know there's one question. I'll probably let H and L wrap on it. Um, that we wanted to touch on mate uh alzi stanley uh who was bear from the grateful dead is the sound engineer who built like you know, the wall of sound and that he lived up by oh, you for yeah. a while, in, like that cedar bay commune um did you have much to do with him i oh, know that would have been my 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 place cedar bay yeah i don't know if he's but he lived in um uh out here at um the walsh river um bear apparently there was going to be a a mini ice age and um that was the fucking the place to be or some some shit something about no earthquakes were going to be there but um all the young people like particularly my son um they all got stuck into his acid eh? and um so they were like doing my weed and my hash and owsley's acid at the same time and i said to the boy Fuck, you guys are spoiled like no one gets that <laughs> shit, you know yeah right <laughs> anyone anymore and they're you you young fucking like they're, they're just teenagers man and they're into this uh li liquid acid on fucking on on sugar cubes and uh and shit like that and, wow. um, yeah man they they had a they did pretty well for they're like uh, a younger version of older people the some of the guys <laughs> younger people here, you know they lived a life that they, you couldn't live anymore especially at that time you know yeah lucky fuck that's great you? Yeah, <laughs> he was a bit of a strange fella, that guy. I saw him, uh, I never really knew him, but I saw him at he's at Mitre 10 all the time, and I was too, obviously. It's like, but, uh, still. yeah, and uh, <laughs> there he is, he's like a little fella, right? Eh? He's not a big man, he was just a little bloke. And I remember looking at him and thinking, This dude's like on something, and uh, he's looking at me like, and I could see the look in his face, and he's thinking the same about me. Like this dude's on something, you know. <laughs> but yeah, that was great. that's incredible. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, he died in a car accident here, fucking ran off the road. Uh, they call that uh, uh aquaplaning. Uh, uh yeah. yeah. Kind of like aquaplaned and uh his he had several wives. They lived in like, this little commune and like you know, he's a couple of wives and and the wives like just like move next door, build a house. He gets another wife or whatever. It's a bit fucking weird. Was, but, you know. Is his original <laughs> wife? Did she come no. over with him? Did his original wife come over with him? Because I think she was the chemist. 
Like yeah, yeah, she did. She, yeah. She, yeah. She absolutely, yeah. That that was the lady making the stuff. Yeah. You know, she and she's still alive as far as I know. And she's the yeah, she was the original one. But then he had some other way. Yeah, just out the back here, yeah. And um I, I I got offered to buy all this stuff after he died. So I went out there to check it all out. To get it out of there, man, what a mission. And then the ex-wife, she kind of like wanted a fair bit or the widow or whatever. And um, she never mentioned she had fucking litres of acid, but I probably would have grabbed those because they're probably easy. <laughs> you right? Goodness, man. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> As I said, hey, Chanel, we're going to get fishing. You, me, Denali. We'll go visit Wally. Definitely Hell yeah. Catch, catch some barra and see if we can find Alzi's missus. <laughs> And this, oh, yeah, that sounds great. Yes, I've been yeah. wanting to head over to Australia too, like super bad. So, yeah, you guys got to get yeah. yank him in on it too. Expedition. Oh, yeah. You know how to find us, man. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing. All right, brothers. Easy. Well, I'll, Matt, I'll pass over to you to wrap up, man. But this has just been an absolute treat for me. Yeah, man. It's it's a it's a blast, especially being able to finally see Wally in person and, and talk in person. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Better look in the mirror. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, great, it's great, great talking to you, Wally. Yeah, same man, same. And it's always a pleasure with H uh, and L. I love you, dude. Um, is there anything yeah. you guys want to want to plug? Uh, any way people can contact you if you want to be fucking contacted by people's, you know, any of that, Wally? No, just Instagram, man. I'm on there, Wally Duck two thousand. There we go, H and L. Yeah, I'm on Instagram and I'm pretty regular on the Breeder Syndicate Discord when time allows. But yeah, for I'm, sure. This time of year, it's a pretty busy time. But yeah, I'm I'm around. You can you can find me. You just gotta look. And of course, you can find everything at uh, rightseed.com. Also at Gert by Seeds in Australia for all you Aussies. We have Right Seed Go Europe. We have. Uh, um, our buddy at Lifted, LFTD Seeds. And, um, yeah, with that, thank you guys so much. This is going to be an awesome few episodes. And uh love to have you back again, Wally. Same with you. Oh, as yeah. always, h and dude. Fucking yeah. people love you. Absolutely. Episode. All right. <laughs> Cheers, okay. everyone. Thanks, guys. Uh, fantastic. Want to sit at the table with the syndicate? Check out our Patreon and our link tree or description below. Our merch site is officially live. We have all sorts of shirts, hoodies, and goodies to sort you out, and shipping is super fast, and most importantly, the quality is top-notch. I've been saving old designs for years for this purpose, so please check it out, syndicategear.com. We also have an underground syndicate discord where we get together and solve old strain history together daily. It's an amazing community of learning away from IG, and it's an amazing resource for old catalogs and knowledge. We hope you join our union of breeders and growers. Come check it out.